Hello, and welcome to Project Modernize CPCS 202. And today we will talk about how we can improve the core CPCS 202. I am joined here by my friends Rayan, Hello. Ziad, Khaled, Amin, and Ahmed. So, improving CPCS 202. So, why should we improve the course? So, we made a study of most of the students in C half of the students in CPC taking the CPCS 202 course, and we found that 90% of the students that participated believe that the course can be improved. Now, what are the issues the students have the students faced in this course? So, we identified three issues in this course. Now, I mean, well, and the first main issue is the similarity between CBIT 110 and CPCS 202. Mm -hmm. We should build upon what we took in CBIT 110. So the students, um, mm -hmm. most students, first repetitive concepts learned from CBIT 110, and we did a survey, and most of the students agrees to that. Yeah. So the students know the topics, but they don't know the relationship between Java yeah. and Python. Yeah, so we should show them the relationship between Python and Java, show them the differences, and make them make a smooth transition between the two languages. Now, the second core issue. Um, about the labs and the assignments. So the labs are kind of easy compared to the assignments. Mm -hmm. So what we are suggesting is, like, we should have labs. We should reflect are, on the labs, yeah. Yeah, we ha it should be, like, incrementally harder yeah. and harder till we reach Yeah, the so we, we started the fundamentals, then we incrementally go harder and harder. Yeah. Okay. Also, um, one of the core identified issues that we um, identified is uh, the poor performance that comes from the students. Mm. Uh, we saw on the first exam that um, the students did poorly, and mm. this gives us a clear indicator that students um, are not achieving the course objectives. Uh, yeah. So basically, students are not performing as expected from them. Um, mm. To solve this problem, we should have more transparency with the students when it comes mm. to exam. Um, also, the other day we were talking about uh, how um, Harvard, um, yeah, how so Harvard, Harvard did their exams and how Harvard the releases all their exams uh, to the public, so yeah. the, the students could practice on the previous exams to be prepared for exactly. the coming exams. So actually, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I would like to add something about the tra yeah. transparency. Uh, mm -hmm. I had an issue with the tra transparency. Uh, I only knew the uh, mm -hmm. the, the exam will include. Uh, writing program uh, like two days uh, before the exam. Yeah. And so if the students, uh, yeah. uh, if the professors were more clear on what would be coming in the exam, then the students would be able to prepare better. And uh, exactly. yeah, and when the students are given the opportunity to train on previous questions, okay, that won't make the students, even though the grades will be higher, the students would be achieving their course learning objectives, okay, and they would be more prepared for the coming courses. However, are the exams the ideal way of measuring the performance of the students? So that brings us to those. So. so that brings us to our long-term vision for the course. Okay, and our main point is that we want to change it to a, we want to change it to a project-oriented course. As as we can see in the graphs here, around seventy percent of the students prefer a project-oriented approach. Yeah, and to add, uh, if we implement yeah. a project-oriented approach, we would. Uh, there it would be result in on the less syntax. Focus, so, yeah, and more yeah. problem solved. And in, in this graph, we see yeah. that uh, when we survey students, we found out that 90% of students prefer developing mm. uh, their critical th thinking and logic over memorizing syntax. Mm -hmm. So, okay, uh, so uh, to, to have a project based learning, we can link uh, CPCS 202 and CPIT mm -hmm. 221. Uh, we know uh, that CPI two 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 one is a based uh, skill, uh, skill based. course. Also, yeah. yeah. So we can then insp uh, get inspiration from the uh, CPI two two one to uh, to benefit uh, mm -hmm. our course CPCS two o two. Yeah. Mm. So, so which are the contents of a project of our project based learning course? Okay. So point. so every week there is a weekly writing in CPI two two one, and. That that uh, developed the students' writing skills uh, drastically. So we could apply that knowledge, okay, to this uh, to our new to our suggestion, okay, to making this course more more project or project based. And uh, every week there's going to be a topic, and the student is just encouraged to uh, write a program 
re related to that topic. Now, uh, adding to that, okay, we will have supporting exercises and interactive projects, which have completely automated testing. Now, the supporting exercises will uh, be just like what we suggested in the lab. Okay, so we started uh, simple concepts like a for how do you make a folio? They do something with a folio, then make it harder and harder. Okay, and then in the end, they would be able to uh, do something complicated with a folio. And then you could apply that knowledge to the project. Now, for the projects, we, for the projects themselves, we're going to talk about it more in the coming slides. Uh, now, it brings us to the writing exam. Uh, so, of course, we will. We would. What mm -hmm. we would like a project-based uh, approach for the CPCS two hundred two course, but we are not neglecting the final written exam because we would. We 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 feel the need to differentiate yeah. between students and their abilities, and yeah. uh, the hard-working students would, of course, uh, get better grades than the non hard Yeah, and uh, also, of course, when you're when the students have uh, applied their knowledge okay, in these projects and exercises, then it would be not like they would be able to solve the exams naturally without needing to memorize, like voluntarily memorize. They would have memorized by applying those, uh, those, uh, not the not their knowledge. So I agree. So, so testing and debug. Yeah. So about testing and debugging, um, one of the learning outcomes uh, is the yeah, ability 14. to use a variety of testing and debugging ways so what we learned so far is or at least what we will learn in this course is uh, mm -hmm. using print statements and basic tracing and yeah. this wouldn't like help much when you are dealing with assignments because it's very complex mm -hmm. so it, you need to learn how to use the debugger yeah yeah and as you could see the majority of students have never used the debugger so the debugger allows the students to find like very hard to trace uh, bugs for, for example, the problem with the next line and next, okay, if you switch them, then there tends to be problems. So uh, learning how to use a debugger is very useful if you want to uh, trace those bugs and find and fix them. Yeah. Uh, for, uh, also, uh, when we talked about the contents of a project-based learning course, we mentioned that we would have completely automated tests. Now, these automated tests would allow the student to be able to practice at their own pace without the need for a professor. So they would be able to check if their code is correct. Now, a common complaint from the students I see is that they don't know, is their code correct? Is, are they going the right path? So these tests would allow the student to incrementally, uh, like one method at a time, be able to fix, check if their code is correct. And we made, we surveyed the students, and we saw that of the people that, we, we showed the students like an example of a, of a test, okay, automated test. And of the people that understood what it meant, the majority preferred having these automated tests. Now, uh, these automated tests, okay, they're not that complicated to make. Okay, so we suggest near the end of the course that the students would be able to create tests of their own to play the, like they were introduced to to tests uh, created by the professors for their faculty uh, throughout the course. And over here, they would be able to apply that knowledge to create their own tests for their methods. And yeah. this is a simple example of a test. However, you could also scale it. Okay, so you could test from multiple outputs. Okay, and also this is every this, these concepts are everything that people learned in the course. Like by the end of the course, they've worked with arrays. They have learned arrays, for loops, and all you're doing is that you're taking, you're running this method, and you're checking is the result as we expect or is it not? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Ryan. Do you think it's yeah. easy for a student to uh, comprehend yeah, this? Uh, or is it but by the end of the course, to be honest. So the the only difficult part is creating the the test things itself. However, uh, there are ways to automatically create it with uh, NetBeans and the professor. They could give like templates for the code, and the only thing that the students need to be concerned about is to fill those methods. Yeah. So very good question. So. After that, we would like to uh, apply the CPIT 201 concepts in programming. For example, we would uh, implement the bit manipulation. And what this would do is this would reinforce the uh, information that you received from the other yeah. course into CPCS 202. And this would make the learning process more interactive mm -hmm. and fun for the students. So the students learn lots of things that are just applicable in theory. However, this would allow the students to identify how to 
take, learn something in theory and apply it in a practical setting. And uh, not the only now bit bitwise and shift operators aren't the only thing that is useful that the students have learned in CPI two one. Okay, there are also bitmap images which are just a two D array of numbers. Okay, bytes, and the students could uh, work with bitmap simple bitmap images. Okay, to create like uh, to render it and make like a simple ASCII yeah, yeah. yeah. ASCII image. You now program language. Ah, when it comes to programming languages, I mean, if we're, to, if we're making changes to the course, um, one of the main things that we should be addressed here is programming languages. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like while well, programming languages are the main tool for us programmers, I feel like the way the course is being taught for us is that we're focusing too much on the syntax and yeah. we're starting to forget that um, programming is meant to be a uh, problem solving skill that we should yeah, improve it's a tool. on. It's a tool, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, uh, to be honest, I feel like instructors should focus more on uh, the uh, problem solving skill of yeah. the students, both mathematically and even logically, because that's as, what uh, programming is for. Mm. We're as just once you learn once in one language, we yeah. Yeah, when, you, when you learn in one programming language, then it would be applicable to another programming language. And exactly. as you know, like many, many students, okay, they go into web development, cybersecurity, and so on. Okay, and each one has their own programming language, however, uh, the syntax is totally different. So, uh, of course, the university can set. There's one thing that's in common, uh, Ryan. Yeah. There's, Ryan, yeah. sorry to cut you, but there's one thing yeah. in common between all the students. Yeah. That's the they, they, critical mentality and the exactly. problem solving skill. These mm -hmm. are the most important things that we should focus on here. Yeah. That's, and that's each language has, has their own pros and cons. cons. However, we're not going to go into detail. If yeah. if we were to change the course in a major way, we would need to reconsider the language. Java could be a good option but we need to reconsider it. Uh, now, the hackathon. So we, we want to encourage students to go beyond the limits of the course to learn stuff on their own. And of course, university can't teach everything. Okay, students need to uh, learn how to learn new things on their own. Self -learning. Uh, yeah, self-learning. So, and yeah. the hackathon, yeah. yeah. Hack hackathon would be a great way to, uh, to, to group uh, all the students together and make them learn from each other. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And of course, uh, yeah. students from upper years could help the lower yeah. years, like the new students, okay, learn new skills. Yeah. And uh, this would allow the like, people to new, new, meet new people, uh, gain pro uh, teamwork skills and uh, exchange okay. knowledge, yeah. okay, and form groups, okay, and generally improve the, uh, the faculty in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Now, the question and, is, and, guys, yeah. can the faculty like host a event such as hackathon? Can the faculty think, do that? Yeah, I think they did before. Yeah. Really? Yeah, but I I'm not sure following. the exact date, but I think they did. They Was it a successful a, one? I they can make an so, event yeah. like. Uh, That's good. Yeah. They can make an event like uh, Engineering Day. Yeah. Engineering Day is not actually a day; it's a week. It's a whole week. Yeah. They host engineers. And they it show you how, how is engineering and how is every yeah. uh, specialization in engineering. With uh, and of course, the same thing. of course, all these skills would allow the students to improve their standing, okay, like uh, would improve their job performance in the future. And, uh, and these like learning stuff on your own is an important skill for when you get a job, okay, and in the future once you graduate. So the conclusion. So in conclusion, we are not proposing for these changes to happen overnight, but over time, maybe we can improve the student outcomes and maybe we can take a more project-oriented approach in the uh, course like CBIT 221. And we saw the uh, benefits that came from that course. And maybe we can establish a cooperative and competitive environment for the students so they have an additional goal to improve and become better programmers. Now, we intend this proposal not only to suggest improvements to the course, but to provide a vision. We hope not only to, to change, but to inspire. We want FCIT to be the leaders for everyone else to follow in our footsteps, to be the beacon in the Middle East for everyone else to look up to. Thank you. <laughs>